has fallen. Our Jericho wall has fallen. Brother Roy read that so boldly in the scriptures from Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 through 5, and verses 15 through 16. Our Jericho wall has fallen. On the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times at the same time. Except that on that day, they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priest shouted, the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army, Shout! For the Lord has given you the city. Our Jericho wall. That's all. Amen. God has smiled on me and he has set me Watch me say, well, Pastor, you just mentioned it. 
I had a Red Sea experience at one time in my life where it seemed like the challenges that I was faced with were insurmountable and I couldn't get through that relationship problem. I couldn't get through that financial issue. I couldn't get through issues in my church or on my job. It just seemed insurmountable. And I want to testify to the church at Mount Carroll this morning. I termed it as a Red Sea experience. Like the children of Israel when they got down in the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army was behind them, they did not know what to do. So is it anybody in here, if I take a qualitative question there, is there anybody in here ever been or have had a Red Sea experience in your life and you give God praise this morning because what was impossible for me was possible for God? Yes, hey man, somebody in here had a bad doctor's report. Can I get a witness in here? That was a Red Sea experience. And then you talk to God about it. And did not God do the impossible in your life? When the doctor came back and said, we thought we saw this, but we made a mistake. You ought to give God praise. Hey, man, then we crossed that Red Sea, and all of a sudden we found ourselves down at the Jordan River. Isn't that right? In that song we used to say, Jordan River, oh, how now to cross Jordan River. I'm bound to cross. I got one more river to be. Y'all are singing it, right? Somebody had a Jordan River experience and did not go out and maybe you to cross it. And you didn't want to forget what the Lord had done. So like Israel, they took 12 stones to remember and let the future gener uh, generation know what God had done. I don't know what your 12 stones of remembrance is, but you ought to have a stone somewhere in your home. <laughs> Somewhere in your car, and as you're driving, you're looking at that stone, you say, God, I remember I was at Jordan River, but that stone reminds me that I crossed over on dry land. Yes. The occurrence of unexpected obstacles seems to be a recurring theme in our communal life and personal lives. The book of Joshua tells a story about Israel's journey to reach their promised land. When they crossed the Jordan River, they found themselves facing a bigger challenge in the form of a wall called Jericho. The Jericho wall seemed impossible to conquer. The city seemed impossible to conquer. But Israel had to find a way. Have you ever said there's this modern day idiom that said, if it ain't one thing, it's enough? I thought I made it through. I, when I did this Red Sea experience, when I did this uh, Jordan River crossing, I thought life was going to be all right. Lord, you told me, and you said to me, and I wish it to you, that everything was going to be all right. That there was a promised land that was waiting for me, a blessing that I prayed for. A blessing that I never thought I would get. But God, you said that you would be with me after the Red Sea, after the Jordan River, but all of a sudden, that there ain't one thing that's coming up now, I gotta face this impenetrable wall called the Jericho Wall. Uh, the city seemed impossible, but Israel, God's covenant people, had to find a way to do it. Jericho was the most important Canaanite fortress city in the Jordan Valley. Jericho was a stronghold fortress that lay directly in the path of the advancing Israelites. Jericho was protected by a virtually impenetrable double wall with thousands lived. So it wasn't a wall that could easily come down. As a matter of fact, it was said, according to the historical facts and records, that the Jericho wall was impossible to come down. The people thought their lives were secure inside of the city. There was a powerful city called Jericho which stood in the way of the Israelites who were trying to reach the promise. Like they were trying to get to the land of promise that was promised to them, not only to Moses, but even before Moses, to Abraham. Kind of good witness here. Unfortunately, the king of Jericho refused to let the Israelites pass through their land. 
the wilderness. The Israelites had three options, like right? we have today. Brothers and sisters, before I take my seat, I want to expose to you or reveal to you that there were three options that God's people had to choose from the seemingly impossible situation. There were three. I want you to write these down for the pins, or if you have a good memory, unlike myself, you can remember these three things. But the sisters, when they were faced with the Jericho wall, which was an impossible wall to them, number one, they could defeat Jericho. They could say in their mind as a congregation like us today that I'm going to, Sister Best, I'm going to defeat Jericho and pass into the land of promise that God has promised me. So think of it takes one of the things you have to do is you got to decide when you come to a dead end in life, when you come to that Jericho wall, you got to decide, or we collectively have to decide, that we're going to defeat yes, sir. The, Jer the Jericho and cause that Jericho wall to fall. Now, we can't just defeat it on our own imagination. We can't not defeat it on our own education. We have to defeat it by faith and the power of God. That God said that he has promised us a land of blessings, but there is a stumbling block, there's a roadblock in front of us, and we can't get past it. So in order to defeat the enemy, I'm about to put it in the hands of God. Amen. That's number one. Number two, the second option here, the second of the three options here, you can join Jericho and be assimilated into their culture. You can say, man, I'm not even dealing with it. You know, I'm not going to fight with social injustice. I'm not going to fight. I'm just going to assimilate. I'm just going to go ahead and just join in on this bad idea. Right? I'm not going to. It takes too it takes too long. I got a will of God too long. You know, the Bible says they didn't wait upon the law to do their strength. But sometimes God takes too long. Mary Martin said it took four days. That's just too long. My brother been there for four days. Jesus, if he would have got here, my brother would not have what well, that So the people of Israel. The couple of people that just have said something here, they could have just said, let's just assimilate the culture, let's just do what they want us to do, say what they want us to say, you know. What, what's the old modern day idiom? Let's not rock the boat. Let's not rock the boat, you know, even if we look at our society today, why are we fighting against sexism and racism and social injustice and racial inequality? Let's not even fight against it, we've already defeated. So let's just join in and just give, let them give us the crumbs that they have to give to us. So it's number two, they could have, they could have joined in and assimilated into the culture. And number three, he's last. They could have stayed in the wilderness, and if you stay in the wilderness long enough, go out there and fed, you know what? You're going to die. You're going to die. They said that, hey, we could have just stayed there in the wilderness, and we could just die. So those are the three things. They had three options. Three the enemy, join in or assimilate into the culture. Or stay in the wilderness, and if you stay in the wilderness long enough, you're going to die. The story tells us that Israel had to conquer the city of Jericho, which was a much stronger enemy than them. So, in other words, brothers and sisters, now let's get close. This is a teachable moment for me and for you. Listen, uh, the, the uh, people of Jericho were much stronger than God's people. I just said it at the beginning of this, I'll be standing behind this lecture. How God is an incredible God. You see, sometimes we don't even know how powerful God is until the enemy seems insurmountable. You see, we want the little troubles. Just a little bit, we just tap through, we want the little bit. Please, God, if you're going to get the trial, don't hurt me too bad. Nothing said that here. God, if I'm going to go through trials and tribulations, if I'm going to go through some suffering moments, God, don't make it too hard for me. But you know what? Let me ask you a question. Is anything too hard for God? No. I got it. I got it. See, sometimes God let the strongest storm come. I see y'all listen. Sometimes God weighs us down a lot in order for us to know by the time that He is God. But how you gonna know that He is God if God just blew a little bit? And you say, Thank you, Jesus, everything all right. But sometimes you got to cross. Sometimes you got to pray late in the midnight hour. You got to fast and pray. You got to believe that I can defeat the enemy that has come against us, which is more stronger than me, but I got a God who's even stronger. God says, I will gain glory through Pharaoh's defeat. I'm going to gain glory through your Jericho wall and mine too. Fall down. Have you ever seen that with strength of God? Which enable 
you to overcome the challenge. To achieve this victory, Israel had to be number one. Y'all write this down. In order to see your Jericho wall coming down, brothers and sisters, it ain't going to just come down because you want it to come down. Number one, it takes patience. Can y'all say patience?
battle will begin. Because really the battle is not ours. It's the Lord. God said, vengeance is mine. So stop getting in front of God to do God's work. Listen. Behold, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with his king and friend. Right? God says, but God, they're still up there. They're still, they're still in the city. The Jericho wall is still up. What you mean, God? That you said you have already guaranteed the victory. Well, that's why the Bible teaches us, brothers and sisters, those who love the Lord, you got to walk by faith and not by what you can see. I see that the Jericho wall in my life is still there, but God says I guarantee, guaranteed you the victory, but you got to be a little patient, Pastor God. What are you rushing for? Ministry for the rest of your life. Why don't you follow the instructions? Because the instructions that I give the oracles of God makes the difference in our lives, brother right. and sisters. Right. And listen, according to the divine text, it is believed that the people of God had to actively participate in the process to witness the fulfillment of the divine plan. You will have to do something. Thank you. 
and I work my job number three, but I stay where I am, huh? and believe in God. Huh? With God, we will do something incredible in my life. Huh? So are you ready, huh? my power for God to do something? Huh? Because I tell you this morning huh? that our Jericho wall is coming down. Huh? See how I was going to overcome. Huh? I had some financial trouble. Huh? Couldn't pay my bills. Huh? I got calls for bills and letters. Huh? Say they were coming to take my stuff away. Huh? But when I learned to put it in your hands, huh? I saw the walls start to come down. Huh? I found the witness. Huh? Maybe there's somebody here. Huh? You had some problems in your home. Huh? You had some problems with your children. Huh? You had some problems with your grandchildren. Huh? That's a Jericho. Huh? But you got that one. Late in the midnight hour, huh? you begin to talk to God about that, huh? and all of a sudden, huh? God said, "The victory is yours." I huh? can't huh? have your witness. Maybe you have problems in your church. Maybe huh? you have problems in your community, and you pray to God about it. Huh? And you never lay the hands on the Lord. Huh? And you are more patient with God, huh? and you follow God's instruction. Huh? That men and women are the always pray. Huh?
down here at 318 Denmark Street. Yes. In this branch of Zion, we are called Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. Yes. Father, now we are called Mount Calvary because we believe in Calvary. Yes. We believe that we are missionaries. Yes. We believe that in this branch of Zion, God, we are faith believers in you. Father, we thank you for this gathering this morning, this spiritual gathering of the Lord saints of God. That have come together on the last month in January for no other reason, God, but to say thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for being an incredible God. And we know that an incredible God deserves incredible praise. And God, we praise you this morning.
kids have heard and certainly what our hearts have felt. Father, I ask that you would bless each and every person that was part of our worship experience this morning. Bless their families, touch their lives. So, if you decide to wake us up on Monday morning, it will be the dawn of a new day of a positive and joyous day in our life. Now may the Lord keep thee and guide thee. And may his face shine upon thee and give you peace. Now may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest with the mind of all of us.